Hello everyone, welcome back to another multiplayer battle with me and Surreal Beliefs, this 2v2. How's it going, Surreal? It's going pretty well. Um, you want to go over your army real quick? Yeah, sure. Okay. Now, we are paused because, I mean, things go kind of crazy pretty fast because we've got a lot of cannon, not on our side, but on their side. I brought in a bunch of Chaos Warriors. I wanted to be able to kind of hit their line quickly. I brought in Chaos Spawn. They're unbreakable and anti-infantry. Fortunately, my enemy brought in a lot of infantry, and I brought in a Chaos Dragon with a giant because I love them and a lot of knights too. And here we go. We're now beginning the battle. What about your build as you're being shot at? Uh, I love my Bretonia, and my Bretonia build usually involves a lot of men at arms. Uh, this time I used some spearmen because we are fighting against dwarves and empire, both of which have ranged weapons. So I used the spearmen as a screen for my halberdiers. Now the awesome thing about Bretonia infantry is that they have charge defense against all. So as long as they're braced, nothing ever gets a charge bonus against them. Not shock cavalry, not great swords, nothing. So they're really good at taking charges. Um, I also always brought in uh, King Leon, Leon Kerr on his hippogriff because he's amazing. I bring a damsel for magic support. I brought two field artilleries because I believe in them, but Surreal does not. I do not. I, they, they're actually, they're not that great. And then on the right, <laughs> I stacked my calf with um, Surreal's. I got a Pegasus Knight group for flying. I have one mounted yeoman, which is an okay, very light calf. And then two Grand Knights, which are super great. So as you can see, right. as we approach here, we are just getting pounded by the um, Empire Hell Blaster, Hellstorm rocket batteries. Right. And so we knew we just needed to charge in. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Now, to clear things up, by we, you mean you, because as usual, they went right after you in the very beginning, again. And I think you used a spell, I'm not too sure. That must be your spell, hitting the Yeah, that's player. my Vortex, okay. uh, Vortex spell. I'm trying to disrupt their gun lines so they can't fire. I don't know how good it did. I was too busy paying attention to our knights, which are now getting behind their lines. Because oh, dwarves yeah. are not fast, and they can't really respond to, to Cav. And you're going to see... Surreal's about to get a nice charge here on their organ guns. Right now. Here it goes, right now. And we're in. Yeah. At that point, we had a lot more to move. And I really feel like when you do not have a lot of gold, I mean, I think we play at, at around 12,000 gold, which is enough for a pretty big fight. But if you try to go in for a lot of artillery, that might be okay for our time. But when we hit your line, you're done. And here we go. Yep. Now, you were hitting not only the Dwarf line, but unfortunately the Imperial line too. But I was able to basically cut right into the middle of the Dwarf line. Oh, and then you brought in your Pegasus uh, Knights, which did a great job. Yep, Pegasus Knights from the back line. My Grill Knights just charged at the uh, Hell Blaster, or Hell Storm, sorry, rocket batteries. So their guns, for the most part, are going to be silenced now, and it's just a infantry on infantry battle. But as, as Surreal said, I have to fight a little bit against the dwarves and against the imperial player as well right which is definitely very very tough i brought in a leader on a chaos dragon because they do cause terror and i'm a huge fan of causing terror in any battle that i fight in and chaos spawn again are incredible i mean if you try to focus them down they will die quickly but if you do not and you let them sit they will kill you they do not break no matter what they will stay there and hit you and lick you which is kind of gross but that will happen oh and i brought in a group of armored chaos trolls I love trolls. Trolls are amazing. If you have them near a leader, they will not break, or they won't break often. They have armor piercing and regeneration, and mine here have armor. They're even tougher. I love them. I, I love the armor trolls. I, I usually never bring the unarmored trolls. Yeah. I'm looking at the now, fight I'm right now. Our cav definitely hit them hard, and they just really couldn't do very not, uh, much. Now, they did have demigriff halberds, but unfortunately, we just had more. We just had a lot more. So much more. They brought all their money into artillery. We brought a lot of our money in a cav. And as you saw, a cav beats artillery, especially against slow players who don't have a lot of cav to stop yours, like right. uh, these two players. Okay, they had a gyro bomber, which I don't think got a lot of kills. Now, I do know they can actually bomb, as the name would imply, and they can bomb very, very fast. But even then, it doesn't really do a lot in terms of actual damage. Right now, it's almost dead. No kills yet. Well, because it's also micromanaged intensive. You have right. to, you know, move that where you want to bomb it, and then just keep clicking the bomb button. So, in a multiplayer battle where you can't pause, unless you are really good at micromanaging, I wouldn't even bring a gyro bomber because they're pretty expensive. Right, right. They can't be effective, but micromanaged intensive. Right. I mean, that is another cost that you really need to think on too. Not only do you need to think of like how much does a unit cost. You need to think, how much time will I have to um, sink in trying to use one group? And if you think it might be too much, do not bring it. It will not be worth your time. 
which is another reason why I love Bretonia, because what Bretonia does with their charge defense, it allows me to just let them sit there, not worry too much about the infantry micromanaging because they could take a hit, and I can focus mm -hmm. more on the cav and do, you know, surgical strikes against right. artillery like what we did here. Right. Apparently they hit my giant with a bunch of satchel charges, but not enough to really hurt me too much. Now, I know that my spawn did not take a lot of damage until we fight their great swords, and right now they're at 91 kills. My giant nearly had 80 kills. Yeah, they just kind of do not have enough to beat me up. Miners are not meant to hold your line. I don't know what they were thinking at that point. If they were going to go down that route, the halberds probably should have been in the very front. Were they in the very front, they would have had a much better time. Yeah, I've never fought against a dwarf player whose front line was all miners. It was a really very odd choice. The miners do have anti-armor, so maybe they thought against you and your chaos warriors they would have done, done okay, but still, right. like, I would not trust miners to hold a front line. As you can see no. here, they broke pretty quickly, and the chaos spawn and giant especially had a field day just murdering a miners. A lovely time, right, yeah. I mean, if you look at what's going on now, they are getting destroyed now. I'm at 91 kills, my spawn are at over 100 kills. Now, the great swords are moving up, they're nearly at full strength, and they do a lot of damage as they are meant to, but again, we've pretty much won the battle here, but we still have a little bit more to clean up. Look at that Yeah, I'm playing up the Imperial player on the left. Uh, my infantry, they break a lot because they have very low leadership, but they usually come back pretty quickly as well. Right. Um, so you do have to keep that in mind, especially for Tonia with the low leadership. I, I'm still kind of learning on how to micromanage them properly because sometimes I'll forget units that have run back towards, you know, our spawn. Right. But you you got to keep looking because they will route pretty quickly but come right back. Also, I would like to note that at the moment we're at right now, your trebuchets are actually getting in kills on one very expensive and powerful group, Demigriff Knights. Oh, I oh yeah, okay. Because yeah. the, um, the Empire player for a while forgot to move their um, Demigriff Knights. And so I use my trebuchet against them because they're just standing still and they're perfect targets. Right. Now they're hitting your knights. Yeah, they finally began to move. They're fighting your knights now. I think they're winning, but I'm not too sure. I likely do have multiple groups of um, girl knights here as well as halberdiers close by. Now, the demigriff knights with halberds, not a fight girl knights want. The halberds are going to chew them up. But right. it was towards the end of the fight, and like I said, I had halberds close by, and it didn't matter because the rest of the army broke. And we won. That's correct. Okay, let's go ahead and end that battle real quick and look at the kills. Yeah, you got beat up by cannon in the very start, but I mean, I really did not appreciate the Bretonians until I played them in single player and then just watching you play over the many fights that we have had. Yeah, they are worth their soul. They're actually really good. I mean, yeah, they do break, but their king is incredible. Their knights are really, really great. And even though they do break, that can be kind of a good thing. Your opponent might forget to keep on pushing on or to find a new target whereas your men will regroup and probably have a lot of men left too. They usually do. They always have a lot of men left um, to do another charge or put them wherever you need to. Right. Um, I love them. I love Bretonia. They're the least fleshed out faction, but man, do I love them. And I can't wait for the creative assembly to give them more options. Me too. Or, you know, a mod or whatever, but I don't know when the modding tools will be out, but hopefully soon. But anyway, thank you for watching everyone. Check out our channels down below and have a great day. Take care, everybody.